Hi, everybody. Time for another card flip through. Tonight, we're going to do the One World Tarot by our very own Lena Rodriguez and Sienna Rose, both who are active within our community. Two very, very sweet ladies. Um, and yeah, this, this is the guidebook. You can see I've already got tabbies and notes and all kinds of stuff with it. Um, it's great for beginners who are just starting to learn the tarot because they go to, um, they really help break down the different cards and the, and the suits and um, the numbers of it, you know, the, the, the whole aspect of trying to read a card. Um, and they, they do it in a very simple language as well as being very inclusive. So their cards are uh, a lot more diverse than what you are probably normally used to having. So let me put us on pause for a minute, switch cameras, get rid of the background, and we will get started on this card flip. Okay, here we go. Starting out with the full. And the cards are sticking together. <laughs> Next up, the magician. The high priestess. The empress. The emperor. Wow, my cards are really sticking tonight. You can tell it's very humid down here. The Hierophant. The Lovers. The Chariot. Strength. The Hermit. Wheel of Fortune, Justice, The Hanged Man, Death, Temperance, The Devil, The tower, the star, the moon, the sun, judgment. The world. All right. Okay. The first minor arcana suit that we're going to follow is the wands. Um, wands are uh, considered to have the following keywords. Initiative, leadership, ego, identity, ambition, passion. The element is fire. The meaning of fire is creativity, passion, and physical labor. The corresponding astrology signs are Aries, Leo, and Sagittarius. The time period is day. And it says the inherent properties of wands, also referred to as rods or staffs, can be used for support or as a weapon. Wands suggest charismatic and natural leadership, and people are often drawn to those who possess this type of energy. The wands also bring the masculine energies of a drive, assertive sexuality, and ambition. The wands are represented by the element of fire. Since the beginning of humankind, 
fire has played a significant role in life by providing warmth, cooking food, and making tools. The wands have also been closely associated with our spiritual practices, past and present. Through bonfires to celebrate the gods, perpetual sacred fires in temples, and candles in many rituals. Fire energy drives our passion for excelling at what we do and for inspiring others. Wand cards represent an outgoing personality, like the fire signs in astrology. The energy of the wands is about having a healthy ego, attracting the attention of others, and bringing people on board for the next big project. When this energy is used well, it generates enthusiasm in others. This may mean drawing other people on board through a large-scale business or creative project. In spiritual terms, it may take the form of group rituals or meditations in person or on or online. The positive aspects of the wands is energizing, inspiring, and creative. The negative aspects are intolerant, self-obsessed, and aggressive. All right, so let's continue. We have the Ace of Wands. Two of Wands, Three of Wands, Four of Wands, Five of Wands, Six of Wands, Seven of Wands, Eight of Wands, Nine of Wands, Ten of Wands, The Page of Wands, The Knight of Wands, The Queen of Wands, and The King of Wands. Okay, next up we have the Suit of Swords. Key words for swords are intellect, rational thought, communication, and justice. The element is air. The meaning of air is mind, mental self, logical, intellectual, verbal communication, information. The corresponding astrology signs are Aquarius, Gemini, that's me, and Libra. The time period is weeks. Image, a sword is double-edged. It can cut through deceit and seek truth, but can also wound with words. Inherit properties of swords. As the suit connected to the mind and intellect, swords are associated with knowledge and higher learning. They govern all forms of communication including social media. The suit of swords also represents attitudes and belief systems. In their purest form, swords seek truth and support justice without vengeance. They can also cut through deception or nonsense. Like the wands, the sword cards can also be weapons for defense or attack. They express masculine energy that is action-oriented and can be extremely powerful, even when not visible. Remember, the swords connect to air energy, which is an invisible element. Air is constantly moving and may vary from a light breeze to a forceful gale. Sword cards indicate you can benefit from being earthed by walking along a beach or through the woods. If you don't have access to these natural spaces, 
simply take time to lay on your back on a towel on your living room floor, arms and legs relaxed, and visualize yourself being grounded. If you live too much in your head, it may be time to explore more physical pursuits to keep your energy in balance. Swords personify your rational intelligence, but you also need to understand your emotions and those of others. The spiritual side of the suit is about being able to wield the sword with compassion. A large scale example of this is a country that has superior arms and could dominate another country, but opts to win over hearts and minds instead. Sometimes it is not about being right or even winning. It is about showing empathy towards those who do not have your gifts and insights. Positive aspects, sharp, smart, motivated by justice. Negative aspects, verbal attack, scheming, causing problems. So let's go to the cards. Get started. We have, scooch this up a little bit, the Ace of Swords, the Two of Swords, the Three of Swords, the Four of Swords, the Five of Swords, the Six of Swords, Seven of Swords, Eight of Swords, Nine of Swords, Ten of Swords, Page of Swords, Knight of Swords, Queen of Swords, and the King of Swords. All right, let's go on to the Okay, next up we have the Suit of Cups. Key words are emotions, relationships, intuition, empathy, and creativity. The element is water. Meaning of water is emotional self, spiritual connection, intuition, perception. Corresponding astrology signs, Pisces, Cancer, and Scorpio. Time period, months. Image, a chalice containing water, the source of life. Inherent properties of cups. Cups symbolize the inner self and relationships. This suit is associated with the realm of emotions and the unconscious or subconscious, which is vast and fluid. Water energy can be represented by the stillness of a calm lake or the destructive force of a torrential flood. This is the suit of the dreamer. Many musicians and artists have an abundance of cup energy as it governs the imagination and the creative arts. The cup cards represent sensitivity, intuition, and the ability to feel the energy of others. The cups embody divine feminine energy that fosters understanding, nurturing, and, and empathy. The cups are also about escapism. This can be in the form of fantasy, as a reprieve from everyday life, and that can be fine. However, it can also be escaping through alcohol, drugs, in ways that are unhealthy for you. The positive aspects, adaptable, intuitive, and loving. The negative aspect, passivity, inertia, being over-emotional. Okay, let's go on to the cards. Starting out, we have the Ace of Cups, Two of Cups, Three of Cups, Four of Cups, 
Five of Cups. Six of Cups. Seven of Cups. Eight of Cups. Nine of Cups. Ten of Cups. Page of Cups. Knight of Cups. Queen of Cups. King of Cups. All right, time to go on to the next. Okay. The last suit of the deck is the suit of pentacles. Key words are financial security, being grounded, practical, hardworking, generous, personal values. Element is earth. The meaning of earth, physical self, materialism or wealth, employment, nature. Corresponding astrology signs, Taurus, Virgo, Capricorn. Time period, years. The image, a pentacle is a circular coin marked by a pentagram, a five-pointed star representing the four elements of fire, air, earth, and water, and the fifth element, spirit. The inherent properties of pentacles. Pentacles, also known as coins, refer to finances and security. The pentacles reflect the material world of work, home, and leisure. They can represent a desire to, over, to accumulate wealth, power, and worldly possessions. They symbolize earthly things, not just material objects. They are also about our personal values. For most people, pentacles are about having enough money and possessions to be comfortable and to feel secure in their home. Not everyone is seeking vast sums of money and associated power. There is another essential aspect to pentacles. Remember the old saying, your health is your wealth. Pentacles also govern the physical body and overall health. When well balanced with other energies, pentacle cards are practical. They indicate a generous nature and willingness to help others. This is a very creative suit. Innovative projects can be brought to fruition if time is invested in making things happen. Pentacles have feminine energy and are concerned with material security, often the home, and are concerned with material No, I said that. Let me start over. Pentacles have feminine energy and are concerned with material security, often the home, and making others feel secure. Pentacles are grounded and nature-oriented, representing the earthly and tangible expressions of spirit, such as hiking in the woods, gardening, or caregiving to other people and animals. Positive aspects, prosperity and security, ability to make things happen, practical help, negative aspects, possessive, materialistic, overindulgent. All right, let's go to the cards. So now we have the Ace of Pentacles. Two of Pentacles. Three of Pentacles. Four of Pentacles. Five of Pentacles. Six of Pentacles. Seven of Pentacles. 
Eight of Pentacles. Nine of Pentacles. Ten of Pentacles. Page of Pentacles. Knight of Pentacles. Queen of Pentacles. And King of Pentacles. Well, that's it. That covers the entire deck. Um, and that was just little excerpts from the book I was reading about each suit. It goes into far more detail, which is really interesting and very helpful, as well as having some generalized um, card spreads and how to use them. So um, if you're new at all of this, if you're just starting to learn about the cards, maybe this is your first deck. Um, it would be a really good one to have as your first deck. You can get this on Amazon, Etsy. Um, I believe you can order it directly from Dr. Lena or from Sienna, maybe from like their, their websites. Um, I didn't think to look before I did this to see. But I know I got mine. I, it was a gift from one of my readers. Um, uh, one of my uh, subscribers, I guess you could say, um, who gifted me with this deck when it first came out, which I really appreciate it and I absolutely love it. So I hope one day to be able to meet Miss Lena or Sierra, e Sienna, either one, just to tell them how much I really enjoy using their deck. So I hope y'all enjoyed that. Have a great day and I will see everyone soon. Bye for now.